every Family Guy controversy explained by Lydia Loves Timelines. I wanted to jump into the uh, Family Guy controversy iceberg because there's a lot of dark humor in Family Guy. I saw a lot of really, really cursed dark humor shit on Family Guy, right? Some stuff that'll really make my, my blood curl and boil. But I didn't know that there was actually any Family Guy incident that there was like a legitimate controversy surrounding it. I just thought people knew that Family Guy was crude. We all ask ourselves, where are those good old fashioned values on which we used to rely? But I didn't think there were actual controversies that, that went around. So let's just jump right into the rabbit hole here. Goes together like yin and yang. One simply can't exist with- See, like, this is one of the most famous and iconic racist Family Guy clips. But was there an actual controversy? Or was it just, like, cursed funny? Was it just, like, dark humor? That the other. And it's the show's shocking and offensive humor that has kept the series enormously popular. Even to the point where it survived oh, not wait, one- wait, wait, hold up, what? But two cancellations. And his whole no one is safe and everything is off limits attitude has naturally suffered backlash over the years, right. even being banned in- The dumpster baby dance? Oh god, that is not okay! That is not okay, bro! Old countries now. So, with his 20 plus years on air, yeah, I thought it was about scene. time to expose and explore Family Guy's biggest, most explicit, and most shocking controversies. And I have to say that looking at this list right here, it's shocking what Family Guy has gotten past TV execs over the years. And it's funny how YouTube seems to be more hot on censorship than the mainstream media now. Just recently, YouTube's been on a real mission to restrict my ads on my Family Guy videos, so I won't be surprised if they go after this one too. I feel you. I feel you. I I've been getting some... Solid age restrictions over my time. So if you make sure you're subscribed, you can watch my videos before YouTube takes them down to the fiery pits of hell. Yeah, they, they, tend, Prom to, they tend to do that. Subscribe to me, gamers. Do it. Click the like button. You can become a member and support your boy. Night, dumpster baby. Now yeah, I knew the dumpster baby one would be here. That that was just, I remember when I watched it, I was so unbelievably cursed. Now, uh, the prom night dumpster baby cutaway gag in season five's Airport 7 is one of the most shocking and bizarre scenes in Family Guy history. Basically, a teenager puts a paper bag in the dumpster before re-entering the prom and a baby pops out of the bag and belts out a killer song. Then, lo and behold, a bunch of backup singer babies appear too, using their umbilical cords to swing and hang off of. Bruh. And apparently, this was based so very loosely, of course, on a real live story. But still, many, many people are outraged. But what do you expect from family? What are you outraged about? That is just gross? I feel like normally there's some sort of propaganda that people get pissed off about. The Parents Television Council. Now, Family Guy wouldn't be Family Guy if they weren't trying to outrage conservative parents who believe that TV was corrupting the youth's mind. <laughs> Oh no. Wait. Oh God, not this clip. And if they didn't like The Simpsons in the 90s, they certainly were gonna hate Family Guy. During the show's second season, the Parents Television Council campaigned to get Fox to cancel Family Guy. Really? And the show made regular appearances on their annual lists of worst primetime shows for family viewing lists in the 2000s, as well as many episodes making their worst Damn. TV shows of the week lists. All right. Oh, no. Parents Television and Media Council. That has got to be the least trustworthy council of critics in history. The PTC has even filed many complaints. What? What is this logo? Plains to the United States Federal Communications Commission, also known as the freaking FCC. I called the FCC. Oh yeah, I know all about the FCC. And amongst those complaints include season threes and the wiener is, simply what? for, well, the title. Another right. one was, unsurprisingly, season four's PTV, which famously satirized the FCC along with several explicit jokes. We're tired of you infecting people with your smut. This is an epidemic, and it must be contained. And another complaint came from season seven's Family Gay. For seeing Family Gay? In such a Stewie eating a bowl of cereal with horse seed and an 11 way orgy. Stewie was eating oatmeal with horse seed? What? Oh God, what? It's gross. I mean, not cancelable, but just kind of disgusting. What? Seth MacFarlane's response to this was, and I quote, for an organization that prides itself on Christian values, they spend their entire day hating people. Family guys, Wait, what, what, 
<laughs> they can all suck my dick as far as I'm concerned. That, that sounds like Seth MacFarlane. They spend their entire day hating people. Family Guy's first band episode. All right. What was the first? If, dude, you can't put dumpster babies, wasn't man. First episode that the Fox Network completely banned from airing was season. <laughs> Oh God, the Jewish conspiracies! Threes, when you wish upon a Weinstein. In the episode- Dude, I remember this episode. So Glenn and Cleveland managed to convince Peter that people with Jewish sounding names can help him get rich. So after he sings a parody of when you wish upon a star called I need a Jew, up pops a Jewish- <laughs> After he sings it's a parody a of When You Wish Upon a Star called I oh Need a Jew, my God. up pops a Jewish man called Max Weinstein, Let's arriving go. at the Griffins after his car breaks down. Max turns out to be an accountant and he- No way, is it accountant? What? Helps Peter get the money back he lost to a scam artist and so- Wait, so he's a good guy? They made him a- Why is this band? So Peter decides that Chris would become a whole lot smarter if he became Jewish. Well, listen, nothing else has been working on Chris, I'm just saying. But Peter eventually learned his lesson that success is not based on one's religion, but the person themselves. Before getting attacked by nuns who hear that Peter strayed from Catholicism. This episode was originally meant to air in season two in the year two. I feel like why was this banned? All in all, this, all things considered, this is a pretty gen generic family guy episode. 2000, but Fox felt the episode was <laughs> I'm gonna use my Star of David as a weapon. Far too anti-Semitic to be on television. So the episode was put on the shelf for a while until it became available on DVD in September of 2003. Oh. In December of 2004, the episode finally aired on Fox. Oh, it was on television at the end. A couple of years after, Family Guy was canceled for the second time. Three years- Please don't cancel them over another, another Jewish episode. After the episode aired, the Bourne Company publishing house filed a lawsuit against Family Guy for copyright infringement over the episode song. Okay, that's copyright infringement. That's not real controversy. However, in 2009, a US district judge ruled in favor of Family Guy, let's saying go. it did not infringe on copyright. That's a parody. Fair use. Let's go. Fair use. Woo! Maybe it's what it was all about. Despite the negative reception in the DVD commentary, Seth MacFarlane actually claims to have shown the episode script to two rabbis. And <laughs> what? And they both approved it. They're re what does that even mean? Two rabbis. This is a rabbi confirmed episode of Family Guy. It's okay. Rabbis have said that this episode is fine. Reason for approving it is because, and I quote, because Peter learned the right lesson in the end. Barbershop Quartet. In season four, Peter and Brian discover that Cleveland's wife is having an affair what? and they realize that they have to break the bad news to him. And it's here where Peter states that he has a real knack for delivering bad news. Oh no, oh no, oh God, oh no, oh no, where's this going? Oh. Cutting to a scene where he and some others give a man the worst news he's ever had in his life through the means of a catchy song and dance. And unsurprisingly, this gag drew immediate backlash from viewers. And what? Well, why? I mean, I feel like as far as Family Guy controversies go, giving an AIDS patient the news that they have AIDS in a meme way is just kind of far for the course for Family Guy. Serious criticism from the AIDS service organizations, but the writers defended the gag by saying the tastelessness was intentional because- Of course it was intentional. This is Family Guy. That's literally everything that they've done ever. That's the joke. That's the joke. And despite uh. its controversy, the gag has resurfaced a few times over the series, such as in season 19's Cutaway Land, when Peter and Lois find themselves next door to a hospital room where the song is being performed. Ooh, and next door is a classic song about AIDS that I now partly regret. That I love when TV is meta like that, that they call out things that they've been canceled for. It makes me feel like I kind of relate to them in a sad way. It's like when I get canceled and I like, you know, make funny references to like, oh, remember that time that uh, on Twitter, all of a sudden uh, I got, I got x.com. <laughs> remember when they posted that, that X video and, and obliterated me in front of everybody and ruined my life? <laughs> remember, remember that time? I don't regret anything. There's South Park beef. 
It's oh, not yeah, right. I remember this. Just the critics and the general public that Family Guy pisses off, but also their peers in the animation industry. Yeah. Before Family Guy came along with its edgy humor, there was South Park. And as it turns out, the South Park creators actually have gone on record to express their dislike for Family Guy, hating any comparison between their shows that people drew in the past. True. So to help me break down this iconic hey, cartoon vibe, my boy Blooms, I love that guy. Corey, I asked YouTube's biggest South Park expert, Blooms, to help me out. Hey, it's me, Blooms, you know, the South Park guy. I've been asked to talk about the beef between Family Guy and South Park because, you know, I'm the South Park guy. So it all started in 2006 when South Park released the Cartoon Wars episodes. When Kyle compares Cartman to Family Guy, he is enraged, claiming that he is nothing like Family Guy. He is nothing like Family Guy. They're both, him and Peter, are coincidentally annoying and angry and vindictive and cruel and evil people that terrorize the society and neighborhood around them while both being funnily overweight in a group of four guys being bros. Wait a second, is every TV show just the same? The episodes contain parody clips of Family Guy throughout that highlight the creator's belief that the humor in Family Guy is all cutaway gags that are in no way related to the plot. They basically say that it's lazy writing, just interchangeable jokes with no substance to them. This point is amplified in the second episode, as Cartman visits the writer's room of Family Guy, where he finds that the writers are not people, but manatees. They have a bunch of <laughs> I freaking love South Park. <laughs> of balls with different words written on them that they push over to a combine, creating a joke out of whatever words they pick. This sort of just solidifies That's so hilarious though as their opinion on Family Guy's humor that it's just random gags with pop culture references that now reminds me of the time that Steve Harvey dated a white woman. <laughs> it's like when they just shit out random things. It's like all right, so this needs to be a famous person, racy thing that did or didn't happen. Conclusion. <laughs> that have no relation to the actual plot. After the first episode aired, The Simpsons reportedly sent flowers to South Park Studios to show their appreciation- What? There's no way! They gangbanged Family Guy! For calling Family Guy out. They That's also hilarious. received calls from writers at King of the Hill, telling them that they're quote, doing God's work. Because Bro, of this, in everyone part two hated Family Guy, damn. Toon Wars, Bart Simpson is a prevalent character, discussing his hatred for Family Guy. I hate Family Guy. After the airing of these episodes, Matt and Trey, South Park's creators, made their opinion on Family Guy very clear. They were unapologetic, stating that they do, in fact, hate Family Guy because they oh, don't respect God. the way it's written. It's like, remember that uh, that episode where we made of South Park poking fun at Family Guy? I just wanted to completely let you know that that was not in good fun. We actually hate Family Guy. They try to avoid gags in South Park, and the humor in Family Guy is basically all gags, so obviously they wouldn't be huge fans. Seth MacFarlane has also made his opinion of the episodes very clear in a few different interviews, where he discusses that he found the episodes to be funny, but he doesn't appreciate the comments Matt and Trey have made about the writing staff over at Family Guy. He also has talked about how he doesn't really understand why the people over at South Park seem to have a personal hatred towards him specifically, since he's never even met them. A few years after the airing of the episodes, an episode of Family Guy was supposed to have a joke about Matt and Trey having oh. um, relations oh. in a car, but oh. it never made it into the final cut of the episode. Ah. It's probably a good thing it never made it into the final cut of the episode because it kind of proves Matt and Trey's point about the lazy writing. Like, come on, Seth, is that really the best you got? I know you could have done better than that. What do you mean? His joke was gay. The punchline was but but gay. What what do you mean? That's like 90% of comedy that came out of the 2000s. McFarlane also took a shot at South Park during a speech at Harvard in 2006, saying that they're right about the cutaways since they have nothing to do with the story. They only exist to be funny. Which they only exist to be cut up into little TikTok, TikTok bite-sized formula and completely take over every single social media's algorithm is a shallow indulgence that South Park is above. So that's kind of it when it comes to the beef. Matt and Trey hate Family Guy. Seth doesn't mind South Park, but doesn't really like Matt and Trey because of their hatred. Palin controversy. Chris Griffin has oh, gone on many I saw this. I didn't know there was a controversy about that. I thought that was a relatively well accepted parody. Dates throughout the series, one being with a girl with Down syndrome called Ellen, and in season eight's extra large medium, Ellen tells Chris that her mother is a former governor of Alaska. My dad's an accountant, and my mom is the former governor of Alaska. 
And, well, Alaska's only really had one woman governor. And thanks to her notoriety in the political spotlight during the late 2000s and early 2010s, Palin was, of course, Bro. no stranger to political parody and satire. So why would a girl with Down syndrome in Family Guy make a reference to Sarah Palin? That is so deep. Holy crap. Well, because in April of 2008, shortly before joining McCain in his presidential campaign, Palin gave birth to her fifth child, a boy called Trigg who was born with Down syndrome. Okay, suddenly the joke is a lot less funny. So suddenly the joke is just kind of kind of cruel and vindictive. And Palin's daughter Bristol, in particular, wasn't too happy about the joke, writing on Palin's Facebook page stating, if the writers of a particularly pathetic cartoon show thought they were being clever in mocking my brother and my family yesterday, they failed. All they proved is that they're heartless jerks with Palin calling the showrunners cruel, cold-hearted people. I mean, probably, but then again, that's probably just everyone in show business, like, to be, well, let's be real here, that, that really, do you have any idea how little that narrows it down? Seth MacFarlane responded by stating that Family Guy's comedy is an equal opportunity offender, especially when it comes down to political satire. But even Family Guy's cast member, Patrick Warburton, the voice of Joe Swanson, wasn't a fan of the joke. I know you have to be an equal opportunity offender, but there are some things that I just don't think are funny. Actress Andrea Faye Friedman, the actress who voiced Ellen, who also has Down syndrome herself, responded to Palin's family by saying, former Governor Palin does not have a sense of humor, and that the oh! joke was only aimed at Palin, and not her son. For a throwaway line that's insignificant to the episode, it certainly sparked one of the biggest controversies in Family Guy history. That's crazy. I didn't know about any of this controversy. I am learning so much. My eyes are wider. Partial terms of endearment. The subject of abortion is obviously a very difficult topic to discuss, but in 2010, Family Guy attempted to present their own take on the issue in partial terms of endearment. In the episode, what? Lois agrees to become a surrogate mother to help her friend Naomi and her husband Dale. However, right. shortly after the fertilization okay. procedure is performed, Naomi and Dale tragically die in a car crash. Oh, so God. now confronted with an I didn't see this episode. Oh God! Extremely difficult situation. Lois ultimately decides to terminate it. However, Peter's opinion on the situation was swayed while watching an anti-abortion video. And after going in circles over it, they ultimately decide to reapproach the discussion in more civil terms. By the end of the episode, it's alluded that perhaps Lois did decide to keep it. Until... We had the abortion. Oh my god! That is like the worst way to tackle any form of even slightly nuanced topic ever! Controversial episode was written by Family Guy's Danny Smith, who read Carl Sagan's essay entitled Abortion. Is it possible to be both pro-life and pro-choice before he penned the script? And while 20th Century Fox what? approved the production, the Fox Broadcasting Company decided not to air the episode due to its sensitive subject matter. This was the first time Fox refused to air an episode of Family Guy since season three's When You Wish Upon a Wine Star. Oh my god, oh my- Don't remind me! Don't remind me! Dean. So, in 2009, series creator Seth MacFarlane announced that the band episode would be released on DVD. The DVD cover fittingly featured Peter Griffin sneaking in the episode reel while wearing a suspicious trench coat. Right, this right. actually worked in the show's favor, drumming up way more buzz than a general release ever would. That's how it works. You can never cancel something without giving it more power. Simply for being banned. If partial terms of endearment had aired in its normal time slot, it probably would have made some controversy for the subject matter alone, but not as much as it did by being labelled as dangerous True. and a taboo episode. The Terry Shavo controversy. Okay, I never heard of this one either. God damn! What are all these controversies doing in my show? Oh boy, this is gonna be a lot. So, Stewie's first play in preschool was called Terry Shavo the Musical. And for those who don't know, Terry Shavo was a woman who was irreversibly in a vegetative state from 1990 to 2005. Shavo's parents and her husband fought for years over whether or not to keep her on life support, becoming a huge national topic oh in regards God, to the- Dude, why is it anyone's business, bro? Just 
My my biggest all right. I, I try not to be political because mostly it's cringe. But but my biggest political take is it's not your fucking business. That's my ultimate take. The ultimate take. Oh, you don't like that some person goes against your ideology? Well, that's not your fucking business. The issue of right to life versus right to die. Finally, her husband was awarded custody and chose to pull the plug on her life support. So, for Stewie's preschool to make so a sad. musical about Terry is beyond absurd on its own. Yeah, and what's damn. even stranger is that Stewie actually plays the plug. And in a oh my god, that is so dark, holy shit. Conversation with a kindergarten student called Jared, it's alluded that the musical has been running in the school for at least three years now. Bruh. It's like the school nativity, but a whole lot darker. The public and even members of the Chavo family themselves were outraged. They believed that Family Guy was being prejudiced against people like Terry who had suffered brain damage. And similar to the Barbershop Quartet song- I don't think it's prejudice, I just think it's like, it's the tasteless shock humor that Family Guy's been doing forever. On Family Guy really pushed the boundaries of a serious subject matter into an absurd joke. And while the offensiveness of the joke is part of the joke itself, some believed it's gone down as another gag where the offensiveness had outweighed the humor for a cheap laugh or to simply draw in the wrong kind of attention. Jokes aimed at the LGBTQ plus community. I don't know what the jokes are, so I'm scared to put my foot in my mouth before we even start. But they make jokes against every community. Over its two decade run. Oh God, I remember this clip, oh God. And Family Guy has made plenty of jokes targeting the LGBTQ plus community. Well, yes, and also, you know, um, white people and black people and Jews and Muslims and Christians and Mormons and Amish and every other group of people on the planet. So, I mean, I don't know. On the one hand, the argument could be that in comedy, everyone should be targeted for jokes on equal footing, similar to the style of South Park. But on the other hand, when they're at the expense of a generally marginalized community, they can reinforce harmful and negative stigmas that have been used against them for decades. And one episode that received a whole lot of backlash was season eight, Quagmire's Dad. And while it was great to see an animated character get gender affirming surgery, it was at the expense of a series of trans targeted jokes. Uh, how thoughtful. But that's everything. Every time they tackle any serious topic, there are jokes against that topic. That's literally what the show is. Throw it away in the outside garbage. These jokes were topped off by Brian Griffin's discovery that he slept with Ida, leading to a 30 consecutive second clip of him vomiting. So to say Ida's- Oh my God, they really did that? They really had a 30 second vomit clip? Oh God, dude. Arrival into Family Guy brought in mixed reactions from the trans community is a huge, huge understatement. But at least she's become a more realized character in the latest seasons. The season 17 episode Trans Fat, in which Peter gets gender surgery, received criticism from both sides of the spectrum, with one accusing the writers of bowing down to PC culture, while others have said that the jokes were offensive towards trans people. Yeah, but the Jewish jokes are offensive to Jewish people, and the black jokes are offensive to black people, and, 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 and the gay jokes are offensive to gay people, and you know, the Muslim jokes are, are, are offensive to Muslim people, and the Italian jokes are offensive to Italian people. I, mean, I could keep going, but this is what Family Guy does, literally. And in January of 2019, Peter Griffin himself told the audience this. In fairness, we've been trying to phase out the gay stuff. This was followed by- <laughs> Oh my God, really? <laughs> an interview with producer Alex Sulkin, who said that some of the things we felt comfortable saying and joking about back then, we now understand is not acceptable only for them to backtrack on this in season 18's Disney's The Reboot. In Yo, there's no way, bro. They backtracked on their wokeness? That's crazy. Which Peter says, I thought I read you guys were phasing out gay jokes. That quote was taken out of context and widely misunderstood. Bro okay, that, that's actually kind of funny. Not gonna lie, that, that's kind of, that's a funny line. Ryan's death. Family Guy shocked Yeah, I remember this controversy. Shocked fans again in 2013 when they killed off a main character. In the episode Life of Brian, the pooch was run over and killed. And to make his passing seem even more permanent, they brought on a replacement called Vinny. Fans were furious and over 127,000 people signed a petition. Losers. 
for his return to the show. Bro, it's a show. With the hashtag bring back Brian. Tra- and people got tattoos of Brian and everything. Ending on Twitter. And some people even getting yeah. RIP Brian Griffin tattooed on themselves. Never do this, okay? Listen, listen. I, I have nothing but respect for people of all different walks of life, but don't get tattoos of characters that die. Please, please never do this. But alas, before the ink was even dry, Brian returned to the show only two episodes later. How does it feel to be that guy? The guy that got a freaking tattoo of Brian saying RIP. And the man comes back in two episodes. Oh no. Yeah, the whole thing was a fake out. The creators had no intention of actually going through with Brian's death Obviously. and always intended to bring him back eventually. Yeah. In an interview, Seth said, we thought we'd create a stir, but the rage wasn't something we counted on. He also added, I mean, you didn't really think we'd kill off Brian, did you? So then you had people who are furious he was killed <laughs> off, and then others who were annoyed that he was brought back so quickly, especially the people who got him tattooed on themselves. But then if you were silly enough to get a tattoo of a cartoon dog being dead, well, I think you deserved it to be honest. Liddy out here, hitting the hitting you where it hurts. In 2018, Angus Harrison from the publication Vice wrote that it took him 14 episodes to finally see an episode of Family Guy where there wasn't an act of violence against a woman. And I mean, come- Damn, that hurts. Every Does every episode of Family Guy really have an act of violence against a woman? Because if so, that, that might be one of the, the wildest running gags in television history. While Mayor Griffin's title of being the family punch bag didn't come from nowhere. But Family Guy tackled relationship abuse specifically and directly in season 10, Screams of Silence, the story of Brenda Q. In it, we find out that Quag, my sister, was in a hugely abusive relationship with her boyfriend, Jeff. So an intervention is held yeah. to try and get her out of it. And what I think the episode doesn't do very well is show how hard it is to get out of an abusive relationship, especially since it turns out that Brenda is pregnant with Jeff's child. Oh God, that's so dark. What the heck? Oh, congratulations. Have you thought of any names yet? Oh God. Maybe, maybe Slappy? Oh God, no, Peter, stop, please, Peter, please. Or, or Bruzy? Oh God, it's not stopping, he's, he's not stopping, is he? So instead, the guys decide that the only way to end the abuse is by killing Jeff. And the gang succeeds and instead tells Brenda that Jeff just left because he decided it was best for her. This episode would have been much better and more sympathetic if the solution was Brenda finding a way out of the relationship by herself. But instead, she's barely a character in her own story. And it was, of course, the men. Well, it's not really your story. That had to save her in the end. I don't know. No, man, I don't know, really. It was also the man that was the bad guy, right? So I feel like that that evens it out. This episode was immediately criticized worldwide, with AJ Hammer of Showbiz Tonight calling it a depressing half hour of television, and another critic saying that Family Guy had hit a horrible new low. The Boston Marathon Controversy. On April 15th, 2013, at the annual Boston Marathon, three people were killed and 264 yeah. people were injured Bro. when a bomb went off crazy. in the middle of the race. That was and a crazy while Family Guy, I remember when that happened. Holy shit. And while Family Guy didn't make any jokes or clips about the bombing itself, they did have a cutaway gag from season 11's Turban Cowboy. Oh, it God. showed Peter running over the Boston Marathon runners with his car and winning the race himself. This episode aired just one month prior and the graphic content in Bruh. this particular clip became all too real when the tragedy struck and Fox removed the episode entirely from their website in Hulu and the episode wasn't Whoa. broadcasted again on Fox until 2014 and Seth MacFarlane was upset that some clips from the episode were edited and released on YouTube giving the impression that Family Guy had actually predicted what would happen. A disgusted McFarlane tweeted, The edited Family Guy clip currently circulating is abhorrent. The event was a crime and a tragedy, and my thoughts are with the victims. The sim- Yeah, true, that's wild. Dude, the internet's a wild place. Like, it's a really crazy place out here. God damn. Simpsons controversy. Family Guy has often been called a lesser copy of The Simpsons, with Seth MacFarlane freely admitting that his show was inspired by it. And The Simpsons even called out on their apparent <laughs> plagiarism in That's the funny. episode The Italian Bob, although I've always seen this as a light-hearted jab and nothing too serious. 
but Seth, he wanted some sweet payback. Oh, God. So in season six, there's... Oh, I remember this. He aired this random... Actually, a scene where Quagmire forces himself on Marge Simpson oh before killing God. her entire family. It was pretty extreme, and if I have to be Bro, honest... It... That is like the ultimate comeback. It's like when he calls you a simp, so you murder their entire family as retribution. Wasn't very funny at all. And Fox agreed, also condemning the scene by removing it. I also read somewhere that Seth MacFarlane was apparently quite angry about its removal, but I can't quite confirm if it's true. But despite this, the two shows would still come together in the crossover episode The Simpsons Guy in 2014. But things already got off on the wrong foot with the advertising for the special. One of the jokes used in its promotion was Stewie prank calling Mo Sislak and telling him something I definitely can't repeat on YouTube. Okay. To add some context, Bart Simpson prank calling Mo is a staple of classic early Simpsons humor. Bart would call Mo, ask to speak to someone at the bar such as IP Freely or Seymour Butts, and Mo would say that name, get laughed at by the other blokes, and get enraged at the cooler. <laughs> but Stewie, he took the joke to a whole new dark level. The Simpsons humor from the 90s looks very uh, tame compared to the shows which came after it. And so Family Guy is a prime example of an adult cartoon turning- When did adult cartoons really die? That, that's, that's what I'm worried about. Like there was a point where they were getting worse and worse and worse, pushing the envelope further and further and further. And then at some point they just don't anymore. Look, I, Rick and Morty is my favorite, one of my favorite TV shows of all time. I don't think that adult cartoons are bad. I just think that the dark humor just isn't, there anymore. Bring the shock humor dial all the way up to 11. It was a line that wasn't supposed to make people laugh. It was supposed to show just how shocking the family guy humor is in the world of the Simpsons. And this joke could be that it's Family Guy's way of saying that they're not like The Simpsons, despite always being compared to them. Okay. And predictably, the Paris Television Council had something to say about the line, but when do they not have something to say? Double dribble. My God, there are more. Co How many okay, controversies guys, have this, from the heavy this stuff show been? There's something controversial, but quite as serious as we've discussed before. In season 14's Run Chris Run, Peter and his friends play an NES video game from the 80s called Double Dribble. But the only problem with that was that the footage used of Double Dribble in the clip was taken from a video from a YouTube channel called Switched. There's no way they just stole footage from some random YouTuber. And what's even worse is that this creator's original- AND THEY COPYRIGHT AND CLAIM THE ORIGINAL YOUTUBER! Dude, if that is not living, breathing proof that the YouTube copyright system is a disaster! I don't know what is! The video so that done. Family Guy stole was hit with a copyright claim by YouTube and was taken down. Bro. And while there's hundreds of Family Guy clips that are pirated and posted all over YouTube and the internet, YouTube wrongly assumed that this creator's video pirated Family Guy. That is unbelievable! That is so wild! When it was actually vice versa. This story became a huge headlining topic on many tech and video game websites around the world, and YouTube rightfully restored the video just one week after taking it down. Seth MacFarlane apologized for the mishap since he was away working on a different show at the time, and Switched was at least grateful that the controversy gave his channel some views, and it all ended happily ever after. YouTube copyright is such bullshit, it's such a joke. Duh. And there you have it, that is our list of Family Guy's biggest controversies. No doubt I've missed some out, so if you think of any, do let me know in the comments and let's have a chat. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. That was a very nice and informative video, I appreciate it. Damn, uh, that's crazy. I didn't realize that half of these controversies were actual controversies. Like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitch. Stay weird, fam!